bingo all right we'll start our lab um, so essentially um, what we are doing right now let me just go back all right essentially what we're gonna do now is um, try to understand the properties of matter okay um, the the so, you know solid liquid and gas and we'll have a better idea about how uh, how gas molecules behave yeah so this is the first lab this is uh, you know it's called as states of matter basics um, it is available on your learning center okay it will be available at the end of the class uh, when we when we're done and uh, you, when you click on the link uh, it will uh, it will download okay allow the download if you have a if you have a firewall or something that is blocking it from from downloading make sure that you allow it and uh, once you download it um, you can click on it and it should it should open it requires Java to run sometimes if your if your Java is not uh, not updated it may not be able to work uh, but you'll have to make sure that that the settings are all right uh, you have the Java working Java flash working so that um, you can yeah uh, you can do this lab okay uh, essentially if you are if you are uh, attending the class you probably have a, a updated version of java and so it should be okay to just click and uh, run the lab okay so when you when you open the lab you land on this page uh, there are two tabs here there is a solid liquid and gas and there is a phase change gas so first we'll will uh, work with solid liquid and gas um <coughs> The, uh, or solid liquid and gas tab okay uh, there are different gas molecules or so different uh, different atoms or molecules you can select you have neon argon oxygen water our is in this case uh, neon is selected okay um, you can also change the state uh, directly if you want solid you can have a solid if you want liquid you can have a neon in liquid phase or in gas phase okay so you can change the phase from there or you can change uh, the temperature uh, so you can see the temperature right here in the in the container uh, the temperature is uh, 13 you can change the temperature by by increasing or decreasing the heat okay so you can uh, so you can see that it changes the temperature and changes the state okay so let's reset all okay here we are uh, we have neon as the gas particles okay we click on solid make sure when you're whenever you click on solid it basically comes into the center um, that you know, there is a uh, solid you can see the temperature is pretty low for neon because neon at at uh, uh, normal temperature it is a gas okay and therefore uh, uh, for it to be a solid it must be at a very low temperature what you also can see that uh, neon is a atomic gas correct it is uh, each of these blue particle indicates a neon atom yes and so so uh, neon solid is basically made up of various different number of uh, neon particles okay so not various but different number of neon particles a bunch of different neon particles okay um, all right so now you can see that it, 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 it occupies a very small portion of the solid uh, of the container yes it, it occupies a very small portion this is a solid um, it occupies a very small portion of the container yeah and let's change it to liquid and see so you can see the temperature goes up okay the temperature is higher what you can also see is that now the particles are vibrating uh, or uh, they are they are in slightly larger motion than solid yeah so let's let's compare the motion of the particles in solid and liquid state so this is a solid state particles are moving yes we we talked about it in the previous session that particles are moving even in solid solid state they are vibrating they cannot change the position each particle has a fixed position in that lattice and the particle is uh, is basically can vibrate in that position but cannot move its position yeah it cannot change the position in liquid we see that <coughs> particles can change the position yeah um, but they are still still bound 
to you know the the uh, nearest particles they are still connected to the nearest particle every once so often you will see that some of the particles actually escape and you know go and collide with the wall of the container but other than that most of the particles are pretty much in the bulk yeah and you can see it doesn't have a specific uh, shape it pretty much occupies uh, the entire bottom of the flask okay whatever it can okay and uh, but you can clearly see that the particle has a larger motion in this case yes okay now let's compare these two motions with gas and so now you can see the gas completely fills the container okay if the container would be larger um, the volume would be larger yeah so uh, the comp container would be smaller the volume would be smaller so the gas completely fills the container you can see that the type of type of motion these particles have yeah they are pretty much if you if you follow one single particle that is pretty much going in a straight line uh, you will see that it will go into the straight line until it collide with another particle or with the wall of the container yes you can see that it doesn't it doesn't go in a random direction uh, or or you are a wobbly direction it goes it goes uh, pretty much in a straight line in a random direction yes and it until it collides with another particle or with the wall of the container there is yes there is uh, going to be some lag it would depend upon your internet connection my internet connection but uh, yeah given or give or take you know there's probably a couple second lag i guess shouldn't be that much <coughs> okay okay bushan has a little bit more lag but yeah um uh, okay is the point clear okay now obviously w the volume when you talk about volume gas has the largest volume and solid and liquid has the least volume a solid would have usually in general solid has the least volume than the liquid than the gas okay and gas has a large volume very large volume as compared to solid and liquid okay you can do the same observation with uh, with atomic gases now you change the oxygen and you can see that now instead of particle now you have a uh, molecular gas yeah there are two oxygen atoms and so uh, but observations are going to be the same you can see liquid right there and it's the gas right there okay this is uh, oxygen gas so instead of just single atom um, you have now um, you have uh, diatomic gas okay but all the other things uh, that we learned about gases applies to uh any of the gas you can talk about neon argon oxygen or uh, water vapor okay in in gaseous state so that's uh, all those things applies equivalently all right now the next lab will talk about phase changes okay so we'll just do reset um and and you can also pause the animation yeah so you can pause it you can click on this play and pause button you can uh, move if you if you if you're talking about let's say gas in water you can see that you know the, the things you can you can control the animation if you want to see slowly how the things are moving or where the things are moving <coughs> it's not of great useful and that's a play button all right let's move to phase change okay this is the second uh, tab on the same lab yeah give me one second <coughs> one second yeah guys <coughs>
so let's let's do the same thing again yeah um, we do reset and now here this is slightly different setup uh, now you got a pressure gauge okay in addition to that so you can actually you can actually uh, pressure um, you can actually measure the pressure of the container you can also lower uh, the volume you can, you can in, you know, so in this case you can uh, half the volume or, or uh, you know, increase the volume it's up to you um, but that's pretty much it so again hit a reset before you uh, before you do uh, you can also pump more molecules into it using this little pump yeah like that but uh, I, we don't need that for now all right so at the beginning we have neon as a as a solid okay and one thing you'd you would, ne you would uh, realize that there is no this uh, solid liquid and gas tab right here yeah so basically um, uh, you will have to do that manually if you want to change the phase or the state of of the liquid so we already know that from the previous uh, previous diagram so we should be able to uh, we, we should be able to use heat and cool to to change the phase <coughs> alright so what we'll do now we'll, we'll have a solid note what is the temperature okay it's 13 K and note um, the pressure alright now at what I want you to notice is what happens to the temperature uh, in the beginning you won't see any change in pressure okay uh, or maybe very slight change in pressure but as we increase the heat you'll see that the temperature increases and remember that these are the two different things yeah uh, the heat and temperature is not necessarily uh, should be used in the same se same sentence so these are these are uh, pheno these are two different phenomena heat is a is a is a energy yeah and temperature is how you measure that energy yeah it's a it's a, uh, two different things so let's uh, reset and now start heating and you can see the temperature is going up okay what is what is the thing that you observe when you uh, in terms of uh, in terms of these particles what is the most prominent observation as the temperature is increasing is the particles moving faster or slower faster okay so is everybody okay with that okay I guess I'll have to keep in mind that there is a lag with some of the guys okay so we'll have to all of us have to adjust our speed accordingly yeah we can see that the pressure is not increased because you know it's still pretty much in the solid state uh, uh, you know there is no change in the phase up to this point the temperature has went up and you can see the, so the, the particles are in fact moving faster okay uh, because of the lag you may not be able to see it clearly but when you do the lab you will see that uh, that there are these are in fact moving faster okay uh, when you do the lab it's not going to be any laggy you will have uh, you'll see it uh, the way I see it now um, okay um, Uh, so we'll increase we'll increase temperature a little bit more and again you can see that now it is it has started to change the phase okay it's not solid anymore it's kind of getting liquidy yes and you can see some of the particles are even now escaping and when some of these particles go and and hit the wall of the container you can see that there is a change in the pressure you can see this particle hits and there should be a change in the pressure yes uh, two things um, we say that the temperature is related to the motion of the particles yes as you as you provide more energy to these particles they are vibrating more faster okay that means their uh, kinetic energy is more yeah and that translates into temperature yeah that temperature is nothing but average kinetic energy of the particles if you take a average kinetic energy of the particles that will translate into the observable temperature yeah second the pressure uh, results because these gas particles whatever these these things are escaping are heating the wa side walls of the container and when they do you see a spike in the temperature and uh, since now very few particles are hitting the gas uh, hitting the wall of the container you see very small 
rise in temp uh, rise in pressure okay but um, if we start to if we start to increase the pressure even more or, or we if we start to increase um, increase the temperature even more or heat turn on the heat you will see that more particles will escape more particles will start to hit the wall of the container and you should you should be able to see rise in them so you can see as you increase the number of particles that hit the walls of the container you see a significant rise in pressure now you can see that again particles are moving much more faster therefore the temperature is going up since more particles are now hitting the wall of the container uh, you can see pressure is increasing is I have a question is pressure measuring pressure exerted by the thing or pressure exerted by the thing <laughs> on the thing okay I uh, that's a funny way of asking a question um, yes uh, the pressure is measured uh, you know you need a, you need a, uh, you need a pressure gauge right and usually there's a pressure gauge on the cylinder so somewhere on the top you will have so uh, there would be a pressure gauge here and uh, the, the you know as the gas particles hit that particular place uh, it will measure the pressure okay the same thing you have in your uh, you know usually in home cylinders you uh, when you measure when you measure uh, uh, pressure of your uh, uh, of your bike's tire or, or bicycle's tire what happens yeah, you put you put the little thing at the mouth yeah and uh, obviously the gas is is coming out of that hits the little valve at the pressure gauge okay and you get a pressure reading that's pretty much it yeah it's very simple it's, it's nothing uh, uh, complicated but you have to understand that it's the gas particles must hit the the more the force uh, the more you heat exactly that is the point kirti yes so we the more you uh, uh, provide energy to these particles yeah the more uh, so now you can see that these particles are now uh, 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 you know uh, moving very very fast the temperature is significantly uh, signif significantly high and the pressure is also significantly high because these are these particles are bombarding um, with the pressure gauge much more um, uh, at at a much more rapid rate okay okay when you when you go to a petrol pump to measure um, uh, to check the tire pressure pay attention to uh, what you exactly do you know you don't you don't actually uh, uh, to get a accurate pressure you have to uh, put the thing on the mouth of the you know tire and then and that's the way you you get it yeah so there, there is a there is a connection between the gas particles and uh, uh, the gauge you use yes yeah, so basically and you can you can you can uh, 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 at the mouth of the gauge you can also push with your finger and you can get a pressure reading It's basically that what it is and you can press it and you can get a pressure reading so similarly the gas molecules are pushing that little knob uh, on the pressure gauge to give you a pressure reading okay all right so um <coughs> excuse me let's do the reset now let's go to oxygen same thing no no issues there yeah you can see the only thing would be you have a uh, uh, diatomic molecule here yeah um let's see which one is yeah all right so um let's let's move to water i think it's much more exciting yeah so now uh, water is in solid state you can see that yeah it's in ice it's a ice and you can see the temperature is pretty low and um, uh, th and the pressure is zero yeah so this is ice structure do you see that um, there are pretty much um, you know each uh, each water molecule is making kind of like a circle of six or seven molecules yeah with a large space in between yeah so you can see that there is a large space in between the particles okay there are there is a the you can see that 
there is a crystal lattice in the or the molecules of water have arranged themselves in such a way that the the, the there is a spatial separation between the molecules a significant space between uh, between the molecules yeah and so you can see the volume of solid is significantly high here yeah as compared to you saw with water uh, you saw with oxygen you saw with neon the solid was at very small place okay um, but in 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 case of water you can see there is a there is a significant space let's uh, convert this into water okay and let's see what happened to that space okay you, do you guys agree that there is a there is a significant space in between so let's just pause this for a second so you can see that there is a space there is a space there is a space there is a space so there is a significant holes in this in this lattice structure yeah all right so let's let's um heat it yeah and see if uh, we can convert it into all right so now this is turned into a uh, water okay and let's pause it and do you see that the space has gone now now the water molecules are in fact in this in this liquid state the water molecules are in fact now closer to each other okay agree that there is less space in liquid water than in solid water okay um, we can actually increase the temperature even more I guess and, and as you do that you can see that they actually come even more closer to each other yeah as compared to um, to uh, solid state so let's go back to this liquid solid and, and uh, here and so water this is liquid okay and this is solid okay and so let's just pause that so this is so you see the volume of the solid water and see the volume of liquid water yes so um, for the same number of molecules water in liquid state occupies lesser volume okay um, Asmita uh, unfortunately very little can be done about the lag that is just the way it is uh, videos are are uh, that is the reason why we don't do uh, uh, that is the reason why we don't do video streaming because it will eat up your bandwidth yeah but uh, you know the labs are one of the one of the key features of our program so we have to do it uh, there is a little bit of lag as I said expected uh, expected uh, hopefully it's not as bad as some of you guys are getting it yeah sometimes that helps you can refresh it so um so what we have what we have um uh, said that <coughs> what we have said is that uh the volume of liquid water is less than that of solid water and uh, that is the reason why uh, density of ice is less than that of water liquid water and therefore that is the reason why solid water uh, that, that is the reason why ice actually floats on liquid water is that explanation clear to you guys have you guys seen it visually that actually our water ice uh, ice water has um, is larger volume exactly yes so we we knew the explanation but we just you know the, the usually when you see it you you All right. Um, so the w the so what we point is that in the solid ice has larger volume than liquid ice, uh, liquid water. Okay. So li solid water has larger volume than liquid water, and therefore, so uh, th therefore ice has less density because it has larger volume. Correct. So ice has. L um, uh, less density than liquid water and therefore ice floats on water okay 
why exactly does it uh, expand and um, you can see why why does why do you think uh, kirti that's a very good question kirti yeah that's a that's a very good question why does ice expand can you see why it is this specific bonding between the oxygen and hydrogen it has to form this hydrogen bond do you see that pretty much in every case there is a, a white ball which is hydrogen is pointing towards the orange ball which is uh, water okay these are hydrogen bonds okay and and the water has to form these hydrogen bonds uh, for that and the only way it can actually form this uh, so if you look at uh, right here the only way it can actually form the hydrogen bond right in the middle uh, where I'm circling I hope hopefully uh, you are seeing the same thing whatever I'm circling so uh, so it has to form these type of bonds in that type of fashion okay the hydrogens are formed in a very specific pattern and as a result of that it ends up uh, you know water is not the only substance actually uh, that does that there are other uh, other there are very few you know uh, substances that does that but water is one of the few um uh, uh, one of the most important you can say and, uh, this is the reason why we actually have a life on earth because otherwise uh, it, you know all the water on the oceans would be frozen um this is the reason why the there, there is a you know even the use you know, kilometer layer of ice and you will find the water below it and that is the reason why the life actually exists on earth one of the most important uh, criteria for uh, you know there are many different important criteria for life to exist on earth uh, this property of uh, water is one of the most important uh, criteria other than you know the you also need oxygen and so on and so forth now as i said this is the structure of the crystal yeah this is the structure of the lattice and and, and the hydrogen bonds has to be formed in specific manner okay uh, uh, this is the only way it can actually form hydrogen bonds uh, this is again uh, you, you have to uh, you have to um, understand in terms of energies yeah um, uh, energy required for bonding the more the bond it forms the more energy is lowered okay and so this is actually gives it the maximum number of bonds this this particular pattern and that's why uh, it exists in this in this manner and that's why the whole story no kirti it will not happen let's talk about oxygen you can see here yes this oxygen uh, you can see how they are stacked up yes but if you look at the, uh, the liquid state they are not yeah they are they are pretty much uh, going around yeah so they, they are not stacked up but in solid they are stacked up yeah and that so it doesn't happen in all cases but uh, so you can clearly see that in 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 oxygen also you see that the the volume is actually uh, decreasing in in liquid. Yeah, sorry, volume is actually increasing in liquid because the spaces has increased. When solid, uh, you know the volume. So the 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 more the polar the bonds, essentially the more closer the molecules would be in solid. So in essentially in general, you know the mole the solid would have lesser volume yeah and therefore more density and therefore solid usually would sink in uh, in its own solution okay with the exception of water all right so these are uh, this is the one lab um, any question on this lab so far all right um let me see if uh, all right um so i'll minimize this tab uh, and we'll go to another another um lab this is another lab um now here uh, you have an interesting setting um first thing you will do is this so this is a chamber okay so let me give you a brief idea about what it is this is a chamber and you can actually increase the length of uh, increase or decrease the size of this chamber okay you can you can add gas molecules 
into this chamber you can you can use diff there are two different types of molecules you can use uh, you can use either heavy species or light species okay um, there are different parameters that you can control okay you can make constant we so remember that we we talked about you know uh, these three laws and and in each of these three laws uh, different things were constant okay so you can you can make these things constant and check the laws okay and that's what we're gonna do <coughs> there is also pressure gauge and temperature gauge okay <coughs> excuse me um, all right uh, other things we don't need we don't we do, we're not gonna use the heat control or or the pump we're not gonna use uh, we're gonna use um, one thing it's called so you so here you go you go to the tools option okay and then from the measure to measurement tools click on that one and click on the ruler okay so um, I think let's first do the reset you have a ruler and what we'll do is you can drag the ruler to to the inner edge of this container okay so you can see that this 10 is coinciding with the inner edge of the container all right uh, you don't have to worry about that we're going to control that later on all right um now we can start playing so this is the setting this is the startup setting and from here we're gonna we're gonna control things yeah <coughs> so let me hold on a second let me think what we're planning to do all right so uh, once the ruler is at at that place okay we're gonna we're gonna slide the man so we can we can slide this thing okay uh, yeah, uh, the the left hand corner of the uh, of the of the box or or the man you know when you see you can see that the man actually moves so it's like pushing the wall you can move it till six okay um, so now you can see that this is the red line when you move over coincides with six so uh, what is the volume of the container you don't need to know the exact volume because we don't know the we don't know the height of the container but you know if you count on scales this is 10 20 30 and 40 okay so we can say 40 liter or 40 milliliter whatever it is you know, just 40 okay that is the volume of the container that's all we need to know the horizontal vertical will always stay same um, alright so now we go th so th uh, in the first lab we're gonna make sure so 40 is th this is 10 from from 6 to 10 it's 40 or, or 4 whatever it, it doesn't matter the unit okay Kirti from 6 to 10 4 4 units <coughs> okay no issues um, so now we'll change not change uh, we'll, we'll uh, uh, click on temperature okay so now we have temperature as the constant parameter okay and now we're gonna introduce 80 180 180 180 heavy particles okay so we introduce heavy particles okay look at the pressure what happens to the pressure okay and it should go about 1.5 it's usually not going to be exactly what is going what is given in the notes for you guys but it will be about that uh, you know about that number okay so it should be around 1.5 atm of pressure is that clear yes you see that the temperature is 300 kelvin pressure is about 1.5 atm okay so now according to Boyle's law 
if we increase uh, if we change the volume the pressure changes yes that was what boil boil said and so that's what we'll we'll check we'll double the volume okay so we have um, uh, four units of volume here we're gonna make it eight units so we're gonna drag the drag the guy up to two okay up to this point and so that would essentially double the volume so we'll do and check the pressure what happens to the pressure keep an eye on the pressure temperature is constant so we don't have to worry about that okay and you can see the pressure has came by half yes pressure reduced by half when we doubled the volume pressure reduced by half okay this is again because of the Boyle's law that um, uh, volume and pressure are related if you increase the pressure oh sorry if you uh, if you increase the volume the pressure would reduce if you decrease the volume pressure would increase okay and this increase is proportionate that's what we have proved so far okay now let's hit reset um, now we'll do constant parameter as um, as volume okay so now volume is the constant parameter we again add 180 heavy particles into the chamber okay again you can see the temperature goes to 300k and um, the the pressure should be about 0 0.9 yeah so you can see that you'll have to um, uh, let it settle down a little bit sometimes but um, it will it will never be what you expect it to be it will be close to what is given yeah so uh, probably uh, around 0.9 or something like that okay now <coughs> alright so now volume is the constant parameter okay remember that um, let's let's see what happens if we increase the temperature let's double the temperature okay and and what do you think should happen if we increase the temperature in this situation exactly pressure would double yeah, and so let's make it 600 okay uh, yeah 601 that's about right alright so you can see that the particles are now moving much 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 faster okay they are moving twice as fast okay and you can see that the pressure as expected has went about double okay has doubled and volume is same we don't have to worry about that's the constant parameter which law is this this is Amantan's law okay this is Amantan's law when the quantity of the gas and the volume is constant okay uh, pressure is directly related to temperature if you increase the temperature pressure is uh, uh, pressure will increase if you decrease the temperature pressure would also decrease you can you can do that you can you know drop down the temperature by um, by uh, 150 up to 150 okay which is uh, which is what half of 300 and so you can see that the the pressure is now 0.45 okay which is half of 0.9 okay this is Amantan's law 
all right now we'll do the third law which is charles law okay uh, which basically um I, this is this is slightly trickier to uh, trickier to um proof Let, we will do that let's um, uh, hit reset okay every time you read hit reset everything goes then make none as the constant parameter okay N uh, none of the cancer this is a little trick to get around the the glitch in the in the program yeah um, so bear with me um, now what we need to do is drag the volume first to number two okay so let's so we have now the volume of the chamber is about eight units yeah um, all right let's add 100 heavy particles instead of 180 we add 100 heavy particles to this chamber okay let for things to settle down I think let me let me reset first yeah okay, a second because these uh, these settings are very sensitive uh, so I'll, I'll I'll restart again okay so let's start with 100 heavy particles let's see if things so you have a pressure there and you have a, a temperature okay now we'll slide this to yeah the um, the volume is about 8 unit temperature pressure is about 0.4 or 0.45 something like that um, now set the constant parameter to pressure that's what Charles proved right and uh, he kept the pressure constant okay now we'll do decrease the so again so we have about 300 degree Kelvin it's not exactly 300 but uh, so we'll, we'll uh, take it down to about uh, uh, note the temp uh, note the pressure yeah pressure needs to be constant so we kept the pressure constant about four uh, uh, about four something yeah 0 0.4 um, so let's let's con decrease the temperature now we'll take it down to half about one yeah and you can see automatically the volume goes to half so we started with uh, eight units and you left with about four units of volume yep okay you can see the pressure is still constant and temperature we reduced by half when you do that the volume goes by half is this clear guys okay um give me one second let me think if something else is required all right let's do the reset now okay and make a constant parameter to none so we have basically proved all the three laws we saw all the three laws of uh, of uh, that now let's let's uh, talk about the ideal gas law okay, and see if we can we can play around with that all right um so he s reset n uh, hit none okay and inside wall of okay and change this to three okay so now we got about seven units of volume here 
okay and then we change the constant parameter to temperature and introduce 180 units of alright so we have constant temperature so that the temperature should be 300 Kelvin yeah and you can see the pressure okay and the volume okay it's so make a note of these two things okay um, now uh, so give me one second I'll have to get a uh, uh, charger connect the charger one second okay cool um, alright so um, noted pressure temperature and volume let's hit reset okay same thing we're gonna do up to three here okay and then now we'll introduce 180 of light particles yeah and so that those are the light particles uh, can see they have more energy so they bombard more and you can see the temperature pressure and volume again same as before yeah pretty much same almost same they may not be identical but they are going to be in the same region the idea is that the ideal gas law tells you that these things these three values are going to be same for the same number of species it doesn't tell you which type of species okay so they can ha they can be different gas molecule um, but these law PV equal to NRT can be applied to any gas okay is that clear you see that the volu values are pretty much the same doesn't matter if you use the light or he heavy species alrighty so let me stop the screen share 